Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a system of equations. I guess we can call this an exponential system or maybe exponential and linear. I guess overall exponential would be fine anyways. So we have this equation 3 plus 2 root 2 to the power x equals 3 minus 2 root 2 to the power y and also x minus y equals square root of 2. So we're going to be finding the x and y values and then see what this looks like. Okay, so I think I'll be presenting at least two methods and let's start with the first one. Okay, so for my first method, I'm going to go ahead and focus on the first equation first. First things first. So one thing to notice here, which is very important for solving these kinds of equations, because think about this expression, it's not quite complicated, like 3 plus 2 root 2 to the power x. We can use the binomial theorem, but I don't think that's going to be helpful, because you're going to have to deal with combinatorics, so many coefficients, so on and so forth, and that's going to get real messy. So let's keep it simple and focus on the basis. 3 plus 2 root 2 and 3 minus 2 root 2, what do you notice? Aren't they like a plus b and a minus b? So when we multiply these two things, they should give us difference of two squares. So these two things are, for that reason, called conjugates. So when we multiply two conjugates, we get something nice. And we actually use this idea to rationalize the denominator. If you have a, any irrational number at the bottom, something like 5 over root 3 plus 1, we multiply by the conjugate to get rid of the radical at the bottom because we don't like it. It doesn't look good. Okay, so when you multiply these two things from the difference of two squares, you're going to get 9 minus 8, which is equal to 1. That's awesome. Not only are these conjugates, they are also reciprocals. Why? Their product is 1. Think about it. 2 and 1 half. 2 thirds and 3 halves. Their product is 1. They are reciprocals. Great. So these are radical reciprocals. So how do we use that information? Well, we can write one of them in terms of the other. Which one? That's totally up to you. I'm going to go ahead and use the first one, isolate the first one, which is 3 plus 2 root 2, and write it as 1 over 3 minus 2 root 2. Now, what I can do with that is, in my first equation, I can go ahead and replace 3 plus 2 root 2 with that. So that's going to give me the following. Remember, our first equation was 3 plus 2 root 2 to the x equals 3 minus 2 root 2 to the y. And I'm going to replace this guy with something 1 over 3 minus 2 root 2 and then raise it to the power x and that's equal to 3 minus 2 root 2 to the y. And there's a good reason behind it. Now we got the same number. Even though one of them is the reciprocal, it's still good because negative exponents will take care of that. What do I mean by that? Whenever you divide something like 1 over a to the power n, that is the same thing as a to the power negative n, right? So we can go ahead and write this as 3 minus 2 root 2 to the power negative x. So by flipping, you can negate the exponent. So negate the exponent, flip the base, and you're good, okay? That's the rule. So now we got this equality, nice. Because the bases are equal and the bases are not special like what I mean by special is they're not 1 or negative 1 or 0 so the exponents have to be equal right we're talking about the real case of course if things are complex they're gonna get complicated that's a different story okay but from here we get this simple equation y equals negative x isn't that awesome like so simple simplicity out of complexity so now y equals negative x, but we got another equation. Let's use it, right? x minus y is root 2. Great. We can definitely use it. Since y can be replaced with negative x, we get x minus negative x equals root 2. And that just means 2x is equal to root 2. And x equals root 2 over 2. Okay. The, if this reminds you sine pi over 4 and cosine pi over 4, you're totally right about that. You're thinking trigonometry and that's good anyway so that's the value of x since y and x are opposites then we can basically write the y as negative root 2 over 2 okay awesome so that's going to give us the answer and there's only one pair of solutions that satisfy this equation why because we only got one 
solution for x, that means there's one solution for y. Okay? Cool, cool. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at another approach, which I will call second method. Okay. Second method. Let's rewrite the original problem. For my second method, obviously, I'm supposed to do something different, right? So I got to make it not super duper different, but yes, it's going to be a different approach for sure. I'd like to isolate one of these variables from the second equation. Remember, I started with the first equation in the first method. Here, I'm going to add y to both sides. So I'm going to write x as y plus root 2. And now I can go ahead and plug it in here, right? This is probably shorter path. Here you go. We can go ahead and replace x with that. And let's see what happens. So we're going to get 3 plus 2 root 2 to the power y plus root 2. And that is equal to 3 minus 2 root 2 to the power y. Awesome. And if you want to things, if you want to do the things a little differently, we can definitely go a different route. So I would say maybe there's a 2a and a 2b route. And what that looks like is we can go ahead and separate this. We can go ahead and write this as a product because the exponents are being added. That's going to be such a weird number, right? And then we can go ahead and put the uh, two terms with the exponent of y together. And that's going to be like something to the power y equals something. Make sense? So like this. I'm going to divide both sides by this. And that's going to give me this whole thing to the power y because I'm dividing two exponentials with the same exponent or two powers with the same exponent. So I just need to divide the basis. And this equals this number. Awesome, right? Well, not so awesome, but it's okay. So what can I do with this? So here's what we can do. We can rationalize the denominator here, multiply by 3 minus 2 root 2, but that's just going to give us this numerator squared. So I'm going to have to square this and then divide it by 9 minus 8. Remember, that was 1, so I don't need to write it. So I'm just going to raise it to the power y. And then from here, we get something pretty interesting, don't we? What am I going to do with this? Multiply the 2 and the y together if you want. You don't have to. You can also square this. But I guess if we leave the 2 outside, that's going to be better. So like this. So this is what it comes down to. What's the relationship between the bases? And we know they are reciprocals, right? So we can basically write this one as 3 minus 2 root 2 to the power negative root 2. And then they'll have the same base. And then I can just set the exponents equal. So this equals that. 2y equals negative root 2. y equals negative root 2 over 2. And then I know that x is y plus root 2. This time I'm not using the, uh, the opposite idea, but more like the x is root 2 more than y, right? Because it's a different approach, isn't it? And if you add root 2 to half of negative root 2, that's going to be root 2 over 2. So our solution set again is the same. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.